Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Ex-soldier killed, woman wounded in gun attack. A man is dead and a woman is nursing gunshot wounds in hospital after they were shot up by unknown assailants at Hertford Westmoreland. Commanding officer for Westmoreland Police Division, Senior Superintendent Wayne Joseph, confirmed the incident with reporters on Wednesday afternoon. The identity of the deceased is not yet known, however, Unconfirmed reports are that the deceased is an ex-soldier. Unconfirmed reports also are that the injured woman operated a business with the now deceased. No motive suspects in Westmoreland teen's death, says cop. Police have not established a motive or identified any suspects in connection with the killing of a Westmoreland teen who was shot dead months after his father and brother suffered the same fate. Delana Gill, 19, a construction worker was killed and his grandfather injured when the gunmen attacked them at home on September 24. The grandfather, 84, was admitted to hospital. Head of the Westmoreland Division, Senior Superintendent Wayne Joseph, said the police have not made a breakthrough with their investigations into the incident. Nothing as yet, we're still probing the matter, SSP Joseph told reporters. It was reported that about 11.40 p.m., both men were at home with other family members when they heard a loud banging at the door. The door was then kicked open, and two men entered the house brandishing firearms and opened gunfire at Gail. The police said Gail ran into his grandfather's room in fear for his life. The gunmen continued to fire several other gunshots in his direction before leaving the area on foot. When the shooting subsided, Gail was found with multiple gunshot wounds to his upper body, and his grandfather was found suffering from gunshot wounds to his legs. Gail was pronounced dead at hospital. On June 24, Gail's brother, Deron, 23, was shot dead by a gunman at a wake in the community. His father, Derek Gill, succumbed to the gunshot wounds on May 2 after being shot on December 29 last year. Deron and Derek were buried two weeks before Delano's killing. Police sources state that Delano had been a witness in his father's murder and two attempts on his life has been made prior. A man identified as Theodore Reed, popularly known as Pecos, was held for Deron's murder. Reed was arrested after he was featured on the Police Wanted Wednesday campaign on July 1. Reed, who hails from Anchor District in Witton, Westmoreland, surrendered to the police accompanied by his attorney on July 3. He was subsequently charged. Trial for Sangster Airport Worker Held in Cocaine Bus Again Delayed The trial for four Sangster International Airport employees accused of trying to smuggle cocaine onto a flight destined for Canada last year has again been postponed. Indra Wait, Merlena Reed, Trevon Murray, and Romain Kerr are facing charges under the Dangerous Drug Act. When the case was called up in the St. James Parish Court, the court was told that Kerr's attorney, Charles Sinclair, who was absent due to parliamentary obligations, had requested a neutral date as he said he needed to take additional instructions from his client. Sinclair is a government senator and sits on parliamentary committees. The court was also told that an additional statement from the prosecution's case file was recently submitted to the court's registry. As a result, presiding parish judge Sasha Ashley set a neutral date for November 16 and further extended bail for the accused. The new date did not go over all with Murray's lawyer, Michael Hemmings, and Wade's lawyer, Henry McCurdy, who argued that the lengthy delay to start the trial went against the rights of the defendants to a timely resolution of their case. Allegations are that on October 10, 2021, the four defendants were serving a Sunwing flight that was scheduled to depart from the Sangster International Airport in Montego Bay to the Toronto Pearson Airport in Canada. They allegedly conspired and placed a bag with 11.4 kilograms of cocaine valued at US $570,000 on board the aircraft. The cocaine was intercepted at the airport in Canada and one person was arrested in relation to the seizure. Following top-level investigations, which involved the input of Jamaica's Narcotics Division, the four accused, who are all of the same James addresses, were arrested and charged. Man denies connection to gun found in KFC box. The trial for St. Andrew Man, who was arrested and charged for an illegal gun that was reported found inside a KFC box in his father's motor car, was today awarded when he appeared in the gun court. The 25-year-old defendant, Oshanda Hilton is facing illegal possession of firearm and illegal possession of ammunition charges. When Hamilton appeared in court with his attorneys, John Jacobs and Courtney Rowe, for the start of three-day trial, the prosecutor informed the court that the trial could not proceed as planned. The prosecutor indicated 
that a DNA report and an accompanying police statement were outstanding and asked for the matter to be placed back on the mention list for November 23. Consequently, Hamilton's bail was extended. According to reports, on June 2nd, a police team was on mobile patrol in halfway tree era in St. Andrew when, on reaching Dunbar Avenue, they observed two men who arose their suspicion. The police reported that the men were observed standing near a motor car, which was searched and a Taurus 9mm pistol with a magazine containing 12 9mm rounds of ammunition was reportedly found in a KFC chicken box. The box was seen in the car. The two men were arrested and charged. The charges against one of them were later dismissed after the prosecution offered no evidence against him. Hilton, however, has denied having any connection to the illegal weapon. He is also contending that the police had not shown him the gun that was allegedly recovered. Initiative launched to tackle violence in schools. Another initiative to deal with violence in schools was launched on Wednesday morning. The year-long program dubbed Just Medsit was launched by Education Minister Favor Williams. The move comes as the education sector continues to grapple with violence in schools. Last month, 17-year-old Michigan Campbell was stabbed to death by another female student at the Kingston Technical High School. In an address to students from several high schools, Mrs. Williams said the initiative will seek to reduce bullying in schools and teach conflict resolution. I believe the time is right to add another crucial layer of intervention. So today, I am launching the year-long End Violence in Schools campaign. The purpose of the campaign is to shift the culture of violent confrontations and responses among our children or students and to equip them with conflict resolution strategies that are peaceful and healthy. The campaign is also a national call to action for every single Jamaican and organization to support our efforts to engender and sustain a culture of discipline and peace in our homes, our schools, and communities. So what exactly is Just Medsit and Violence in School campaign? So this campaign seeks to reduce the incidence of violence in schools through a multifaceted approach, by improving the physical infrastructure, by teaching and incentivizing strategies for resolving conflict peacefully, by providing psychosocial support to students and parents, utilizing the creative arts to maximize whole school engagement throughout the campaign, introduction of character education programs, in school, we want to promote a culture of pro-social behaviors among students, and we want to expand the uniform groups in our schools and clubs and societies. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says Jamaica screws industry rebounding well. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says Jamaica screws industry is rebounding well. Speaking in Parliament on October 19, Mr. Bartlett said the industry which was lagging behind due to the COVID-19 pandemic, is improving. He said it is expected to bring over 1 million cruise passengers to the country between December and the middle of next year. The cruise tourism, which was lagging behind in the recovery, is now scheduled to be back on track for 2023-24, with not just the 1.6 million packs that we had before in 2019, but now will be exceeded. We were able to enable a full recovery of a number of the itineraries that we had. And um, I'm to report to the House that we will be having just a little over one million packs uh, this Christmas into the middle of next year from two of our major cruise lines that operate in Jamaica. What is the exciting element of recovery? is the revenue that we have earned and that we are anticipating a record 4.2 billion US dollars revenue from tourism in the fiscal year 22-23 and that will exceed the 2019 earnings by some 500 million US dollars and that's significant. Please remember to subscribe, 